Trump has destroyed U.S. alliances and lost America's global leadership role. But is that the whole story? Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. President Donald Trump ran on a campaign of America first. America first. A lot of people felt like that meant America was abandoning its allies. It meant the era of American leadership was over. Trump's former Secretary of Defense, Jim Mattis, recently wrote in Foreign Affairs magazine, in practice, America first has meant America alone. During his campaign, Biden constantly attacked Trump for abandoning America's allies. And he pokes his finger in the eye of all of our friends, all of our allies. Come on, Joe. You know that's not true. Trump can't even reach the eyeballs of our friends and allies because his hands are too small. Joking aside, Trump has been criticized throughout his presidency for this, for alienating our allies, not for having small hands. Harvard professor Stephen Walt wrote that Trump has ruined America's influence in the world because he was an incompetent and narcissistic charlatan. Another Harvard professor wrote that Trump totally destroyed U.S. foreign policy because he was vacuous and vain. Former diplomat and foreign policy expert Philip Gordon teamed up with former Democratic candidate Pete Buttigieg to write Trump has caused unprecedented damage to the system of alliances and partnerships that took the United States many decades to construct. But has America actually alienated its allies under Trump? Well, if you've been watching the show, you know things are always more nuanced and complicated. And I'll show you how after the break. Welcome back. So has Trump ruined or destroyed America's reputation and relationship with allies? He certainly has been extremely critical of certain allies. Here he is on the recent campaign trail. You know, our allies in many ways treat us worse than the enemy. The enemy, at least we have our guard up. Our allies, what they've done to us in terms of military protection and trade is disgraceful. But the reality is much more complicated. People have wondered if there was an Obama doctrine. And perhaps the closest thing we get to an answer is what President Obama told The Atlantic. Multilateralism regulates hubris. Whoa, slow down there, Mr. President. That's a lot of syllables. Trump, on the other hand, has withdrawn from a lot of multilateral treaties, what some have called the withdrawal doctrine. Take the Iran nuclear deal. Many European allies were furious about Trump pulling out of it. Now, sure, Iran wasn't complying with the deal. And sure, Iran was violating a ballistic missile treaty by testing missiles some labeled Israel must be wiped off the earth. But still, many European allies were furious. And I mean, just because Iran is still the world's worst state sponsor of terrorism doesn't mean there isn't a lot of money to be made there. That's why when the Iran nuclear deal was signed, European companies rushed to invest in Iran. Now, I'm not saying that Europe wanted the Iran nuclear deal because they wanted to make money in Iran. Many European officials probably genuinely thought the deal would work. But of course Western companies would take every opportunity to make money in a foreign authoritarian regime and then try to influence their governments to go easy on that regime so they could continue to make money there. It's what they've been doing in China for more than 20 years why not Iran, too? But then, that became a problem when Trump pulled out of the Iran deal. That meant Iran was hit with U.S. sanctions, and the EU was not happy about that. But while many of America's European allies may have been upset, America's Middle Eastern allies were actually quite happy. Trump's tough stance on Iran almost certainly reassured the Gulf states and paved the way for the recent normalization agreements between Israel and Arab countries. Even many of Trump's critics hailed the peace deals between Israel and the UAE and Bahrain, extremely grudgingly. So when you hear about Trump alienating allies, well, it depends on which allies you're talking about. 
Israel is quite happy with the peace deals. Israel was also happy about Trump moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. The U.S. also worked with allies to defeat ISIS. Those alliances began before Trump took office, but were not all that successful at fighting ISIS until Trump changed how the U.S. engaged with ISIS. For more on that, check out my episode, Did Trump Really Defeat ISIS? Trump did blame some U.S. allies for backdoor financing of ISIS. And you also have back channels of banking. You have people that you think are our great allies, our friends in the Middle East, that are paying tremendous numbers of dollars, tremendous amounts of money to ISIS. So we have to stop those circuits. Money was also at issue with U.S. allies in NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which has 30 member countries. Trump routinely criticized NATO allies for not paying their fair share on military spending. Nearly 70% of total spending on defense by NATO governments is accounted for by the U.S. Trump pressured NATO allies to start spending more for their own defense. And though he succeeded, that didn't make Trump very popular, especially with Germany. Germany has been reluctant to increase its NATO spending. So this summer, Trump pulled 12,000 soldiers out of Germany. Trump also slapped sanctions on a state-owned Russian gas pipeline between Germany and Russia. The U.S. considers the project a security risk to Europe. Both Russia and the EU have strongly condemned the U.S. sanctions. So Trump's actions have made the EU, and especially Germany, unhappy. There have been other international agreements and organizations that are part of Trump's withdrawal doctrine, too. Trump pulled the U.S. out of the World Health Organization. Despite the U.S. providing a significant part of the WHO's annual revenue, the WHO's handling of the coronavirus showed it was more interested in appeasing the Chinese Communist Party than, you know, world health. Trump also pulled the U.S. out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Check out this episode for more on that decision. Trump also pulled out of NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. NAFTA was a George H.W. Bush-era agreement that was supposed to make trade easier between the U.S., Mexico, and Canada. As with many of the multilateral trade agreements Trump pulled out of, he said NAFTA was unfair to American workers and Mexico and Canada weren't paying their fair share. NAFTA is the worst trade deal maybe ever signed anywhere, but certainly ever signed in this country. However, he made a new deal called the U.S.-Mexico-Canada Agreement, or USMCA. And it actually was a big improvement. Not only did Mexico and Canada support it, most Democrats supported it, too. The urgency of replacing NAFTA is very important. The opportunity uh, that could be here now, we can't have as a missed opportunity. So it isn't really about uh, politics, although there are those who, that I read about in one place and another who say, why would you give President Trump a victory? Well, why wouldn't we? This is, this is the right thing to do for our trade situation, our workers, lifting them up, other uh, uh, multilateralism among the three countries uh, that we would have. Why wouldn't we? Well, that, actually, that is not a factor for me th there's whatsoever. A, there's a and perhaps even more shocking, even CNN approved of Trump's trade deal. So how does this jive with the idea of Trump blowing up multilateral treaties and wrecking alliances? The answer might be that for the president's reflexive focus on leaving international organizations and multilateral treaties for the sake of it, his administration's stance has been one of deliberate multilateralism, which is to say doubling down on what works and jettisoning what doesn't. This looks all the more reasonable in light of the administration's efforts to strengthen certain partnerships and alliances. And if you look to Asia, Many partnerships and alliances have actually been strengthened under the Trump administration. And that's because while many countries might not be happy with Trump's America first, they certainly prefer that to Xi Jinping's China first. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. The biggest way that U.S. alliances have shifted is related to China. Trump campaigned on being tough on China. But one of Trump's first actions as president was to withdraw from the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a trade deal that included the U.S. and 11 other Pacific Rim countries. The TPP was a signature agreement for the Obama administration. 
it was seen as a way to counter China's economic influence. The deal itself was pretty controversial. And it wasn't just opposed by Republicans. Progressive senators Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren were both against the TPP. And while some economists said that the TPP would lift U.S. incomes, others said it would cause job losses and exacerbate income inequality. Trump had been criticizing the TPP for years as being bad for American workers, so it was no surprise that his administration withdrew from the deal. But critics said that Trump's move helped China while penalizing U.S. exporters. If withdrawing from the TPP helped China, it was one of the very few times the Trump administration did anything to help China. To the extent that the regime that kills its own dissidents for organs was ever a U.S. ally, the Trump administration has definitely weakened its alliance with China. But that shift has also meant the strengthening of U.S. alliances with a number of democratic countries in Asia. Taiwan is the best example. Taiwan is constantly under the threat of a Chinese military invasion. The Trump administration has shown unprecedented support for Taiwan, from high-level visits by U.S. officials and U.S. military to a series of weapons sales, the most recent being worth more than $2 billion. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo even specifically said Taiwan is not part of China. But Taiwan isn't the only ally benefiting from the Trump administration's China focus. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper made more than 200 trips to visit countries in the region, at least before Trump fired him. Trump has made several trips to India, to some pretty big fanfare. President Donald Trump arrived in India on Monday to a raucous reception. Namaste Trump! Namaste. Crowds of tens and thousands roared Namaste Trump at the world's biggest cricket stadium in Ahmedabad. The monkeys were less welcoming. That helped pave the way for the reemergence of the Quad, a loose alliance between the U.S., India, Japan, and Australia, aimed at countering China. After recent joint military drills, some began calling it an Asian NATO. So the kind of NATO where the other countries are actually happy with the U.S. The Quad has also helped pave the way for better bilateral ties between those countries. Then there's the International Development Finance Corporation. It's a U.S. infrastructure investment project meant to counter China's Belt and Road Initiative. And guess who the latest partner is? Taiwan. But it's not just Taiwan. Sixteen other countries will work with it, including Japan, South Korea, and Australia. There are other ways the U.S. has worked with allies to counter the threat from China. For example, the State Department has been pushing what it calls 5G clean networks. Basically, clean networks exclude Chinese technology, like Huawei chips, that might be a national security risk to all of the countries involved. Dozens of the world's democracies have endorsed it. Europe has started to turn away from Huawei, with several governments taking steps to sideline the Chinese state-owned 5G vendor. Beijing's troubling activity abroad contributed to this, but so too did American leadership. There are definitely tensions between Trump and some of America's European allies, especially over NATO funding and Iran sanctions. On the other hand, U.S. alliances in Asia have gotten stronger. The U.S.-Canada-Mexico agreement is widely supported, and the U.S. has cooperation from most of Europe on 5G. So is it accurate to say the U.S. has alienated its allies under the Trump administration? Tell me what you think in the comments below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.